In today's Tech Stuff Tuesday, I'm at Motor Cars of Atlanta, and we're going to look at the advancement in factory audio systems and how much you can really adjust, how good they sound, and why you would actually leave it stock. This, for the first example, is a 2018 Rolls-Royce Dawn Black Badge. Sticker price on this car, $435,000. The ultimate luxury car, and we're going to see what you can do with the audio. So now we're inside the Dawn. And you can see the screen lit up. Our controls are down here. You rotate to go between menus and you push down to confirm. And there's also a back button, some other options for direct access, uh, going to media, navigation, that kind of thing. And these buttons right up here, it's relatively intuitive. So if we want to get to the actual audio settings and see what we can really do with this thing, we can hit the, the back button, scroll down to tone and we have individual treble and bass like most other radios, balance fade. This round will add an added effect. Uh, usually it's a little bit of an echo kind of thing, uh, make it sound a little bit larger um, than it really is. So it's uh, going to raise the sound stage a little bit um, from your balance left and right and your fade. You do have on screen where you can actually see where that is going. Uh, so you can, um, you know, put it back in one position a little bit more than that, but I'm not sure if this is actually doing anything with time delays. Um, so we could fade it back to the back seat. This is a four seater. And I think it's more just gonna do volume than it is time alignments as there are no individual seating position adjustments for this one. But once we get up into here, into equalizer. So we do have a parametric equalizer in here. Uh, we do have a few different bands that we can control, and you might notice it only went down to 100 hertz. Uh, this is not a very bass-heavy system. Um, everything is coming from uh, a mid-bass that's somewhere in the cabin here. This is a convertible. I'm not exactly sure where it is. Uh, and then we do have components here in the doors. So it is not a very bass-heavy system. It does not play very low. Uh, you might expect that. Um, you might get that from the Phantom, which I may check out while I'm here. Uh, but you do have the bass adjustment that will actually bring several of those bands down. It does the same thing on the treble, or you can individually pick one and bring that down or push that up uh, as you see fit. Uh, so this is a little bit more advanced than your typical system, but it's not really, really super fancy. Um, it is a pretty decent sounding system I said it does lack the, the bottom end from not having a strong sub and that kind of thing, but it is a convertible, uh, so you have to consider that as well. So this is not a mega advanced system, even though it's a $435,000 car. You might expect more from it, uh, but there's a lot more going on with this car than just the audio system. Not to say that it isn't a focus, but I'm not going to say this is the key point in design of this car. So we'll move on to the next car and see what we have there. This is the Aston Martin DB11. It's a 2018 model with a Bang & Olufsen upgraded audio package. Sticker price on this car, $262,000. Let's take a look at what you can do in this one. So now we're in the Aston Martin DB11. This one has the Bang & Olufsen upgraded audio system. We have a mid-range in the door. We have a tweeter in the dash that when you start the car, comes out of the dash. It is an upward facing tweeter and there are some waveguides that happen in there. And then we also have an 8 inch subwoofer here in the back. There are back seats, they are kind of laughable, but there is an 8 inch sub forward face facing right behind there. So this is the basic system. It is not a touch screen. We have this display right here. Volume controls right there. And then here's where we can go to adjust everything. We can move this up and down, uh, hit the back, confirm to press things. So while we're in here, we can hit back. We can go down, all the way down to the settings here. The sound field, we click into that. That'll be the driver, just the front, or uh, everything. Get back in here. We also have the balance and fade, which is your typical, you know, balance and fade for, for any car here. We can move that up and down. 
the equalizer is going to be your treble mid and bass it is a parametric eq it is not graphic you have very limited can't choose the frequency like you could in the rolls royce but there is some kind of adjustment there and then we have surround that's going to be a surround effect gives it a, a wider stage make it sounds like it's kind of outside the doors that kind of thing um, so that is some dsp kind of action in there with that surround effect so I don't have an enormous amount of adjustments with time alignments or anything like that. However, this system does sound quite a bit better than the Rolls system. Um, definitely has bottom and bass, that kind of thing. It does also sound a little bit better than the McLaren 570S system, uh, as you expect, as it does actually have a sub and it's not using more or less mid-bass drivers that do an all right job in the doors. So in this one, Again, we don't have an enormous amount of adjustability. The systems are getting to where they're sounding better, but in terms of fancy adjustments, uh, we're still not to that point yet. For our next car, we're gonna look at the McLaren 570S. This is their entry-level car. Sticker price on this, $259,000. So let's take a look and see what you can do with this one. And here we're in the McLaren 570S. This has a Bowers and Wilkins system in it, which is an option. We have a base driver down here in the door, a mid-range also in the door, and a tweeter in the pillars. So these are all focused for the audio system uh, directly on the listeners, and it is a very good sounding system. So once we're in the audio setting, which is pretty easy to get to here, so from the source we can just go settings and audio, and we're showing the advanced settings but you have the studio setting that will sound more like a studio and all of these settings will stay with this. So if we go up on bass or treble or mid or whatnot, um, that will stay with the studio setting. Then you have the stage setting. That is going to sound more like a live performance. So it's a bit of a DSP, but kind of generic there. And then driver focus will move everything to this listening position as opposed to say maybe the middle or the passenger side. Uh, we cannot set it for the passenger side, uh, but it's a two-seater and uh, you're probably the only one driving as a strong possibility, so not a big deal there. So then here, we also have SDVC, and that is for active adjustments based on the condition. So if you have the base set pretty high at a low volume, if you go to turn it up, it'll end up clipping. So you could end up uh, damaging mids, won't sound as good, all kinds of things come with that. So that adjustment will actually make it so you have the same kind of sound, the same tonal quality through all of the volume levels. Uh, there's also um, adjustment for road noise. So on the bass side, you may lose a lot of that from road noise, and this is you know, a supercar with a carbon fiber monocoque and that kind of thing. So it's not like the Rolls Royce where it's very, very cushy and heavy. Uh, so that is one way that they combat that, that's found in some cars, is uh, active noise control, basically. So this has all of those features in it, which, looking at all the settings, is more advanced than the Rolls Royce. Uh, I do think this actually sounds better than the Rolls Royce. Uh, everything is really intended to be listened to with the Bowers and Wilkins system and uh, has more low-end bass and that kind of thing. Um, so I would call that a win on this one. This is, for a supercar, uh, probably one of the better audio systems you've ever heard in a supercar, and better than a lot of other cars, including that Rolls-Royce Dawn. This is the 2018 Lotus Evora 400. Sticker price on this car is $121,000. may not look like it, but it is a four-seater and it does have the optional subwoofer upgrade in this audio system. So let's take a look at what you can do in this one. Now we're inside the Lotus. We have mid-range in the door, tweeter on the dash on both sides, no center channel as we've had in all three of the other cars. We do have a subwoofer down there, uh, laughable back seat, very, very small car. You can see the engine there. But what you don't expect to see in this car is the factory Alpine head unit. So, everything that you can do on a regular Alpine head unit is what we have here. We can hit menu, go into setup, and the sound, 
and we can go through everything here. So we've got your balance and fade, though we don't actually have rear speakers in this thing. Um, so there's that. Uh, we have subwoofer phase, subwoofer volume, EQ presets. All this stuff is regular Alpine stuff. We can go into a parametric EQ, we can set frequencies, we can set, set the Q, all this kind of thing we can set independent on different sources. We can set crossovers, all of this stuff from the factory. Time alignments, we can make it so we get the best possible sound quality from the driver's side or the passenger side, probably not in the rear. But all of these things, we have the most adjustment of any car we've looked at today and the least expensive car we've looked at today. But it is also the worst sounding car we've looked at today. Everything is pretty lackluster in this thing, as you might expect. Um, this is a very small sports car, but uh, the audio quality is lacking uh, pretty much in here. But we have the most adjustments of anything because they just went with a factory Alpine radio. They didn't develop their own system, didn't tie it in. Uh, we just have a factory INEW977HD from Alpine. This is the 2019 Lamborghini Urus. Price tag on this car, $249,000. This is the best audio system ever offered by Lamborghini. It has an optional Bang & Olufsen sound system. That option, $6,313. Let's see what we can do with it. So now we're inside the Lamborghini Urus. And the first notable thing, when you turn it on, we are going to see tweeters come out of the dash. That's a Bang & Olufsen thing. So, we have the display for the radio here. Climate control is right below it. And then we have uh, some other volume control here, some other buttons there. But most of this is done through the touch screen here, short of the volume. So here where we start, we can go home, over to settings, and then sound. So once we're in here, we have treble, bass, and balance fade. There is a subwoofer. It is very well hidden. You can turn it up. hear it coming from the back a little bit. Sounds very good. You can change the focus, front, rear, and movie. Not sure on movie. I can play with that more. But that does going that is going to do your time alignments and that sort of thing all through there. And uh, focus it on those given positions. Then we also have the surround level that, again, is going to give you more of the, a different sound and this also likes to turn off while you're in the middle of it if you don't start the car and independent volume control for different things and 3d effects so we've got some dsp things in here um, this is actually a very very good sounding system it is better than uh, the other offerings from lamborghini by far and so far today this is the best sounding system that i've had uh, and there is some adjustability. It's not very, very technical on the side of that, but uh, you can get some small adjustments um, that are effective. Uh, it's just it's not down to the specifics with the uh, time alignments and that sort of thing. So very, very simple function in, uh, in this one, but it is very, very effective uh, with the touchscreen, easy to navigate. So uh, if you're in the market for an SUV and you want to spend $249,000, this is an excellent option for factory audio. This is the Mercedes Maybach S560. It's a very large car. It's $177,000. This comes standard with a Burmeister system that we're going to have to listen to and check out from the front of the car as well as the back of the car because this is the kind of car that you get driven in not the kind you necessarily drive. All right, so now we're in the Maybach. We have a 12.3 inch screen. It is not a touch screen, but that's where the navigation, everything shows up in it. The display on it looks incredible. All of our controls are down here. So this is actually a touch pad. We have a back, forward, home. And this, uh, we can turn knob, push for confirmation, that kind of thing. Volume is right here, power right there as well. So this being the Burmeister system, we have Full range in the door here. And the tweeters, which I will give it just enough volume 
the tweeters twist out when you have audio signals. So that is one of the really cool things about the Burmeister. And when you have no volume, they go right back in. So we have that in the front, and this is a very, very large car, as you can tell. We have more speakers down here in the back, as well as in the center of the ceiling and on the sides. And then also on the very back of the rear deck, it's way back there. This car has three subwoofers, two up front that are under the dash and then one in the trunk. This system does sound very, very good. I've had a limited amount of time dealing with it, but it is one of the best sounding factory radios I've ever heard. It is not extremely bass heavy, but it is very precise. Uh, the average person that's going to be in one of these cars should be definitely satisfied with it. Uh, I could definitely drive it every day and I'd be okay with it. So using these controls, we're going to see what we can do in terms of adjustment. So if we go down to sound, the equalizer is not so much an equalizer. Um, it is a bass, mid, and treble, and that's all we have. The fader and balance, again, forward and backward, left and right, it's all we really have. Automatic volume adjustment is going to be for uh, the faster you get, more road noise, it adjusts for that. Now the VIP seat is where it gets interesting. We can turn that on and we can select which passenger everything is going to be focused on. So that's going to be your time delays and that kind of thing. It's just labeled as a VIP seat. So we have the driver, passenger, rear left, rear right. Now, why would you have it focused on the rear as a VIP seat? Well, like I said, this is a car that you get driven in, not necessarily a car you drive. And the back is quite luxurious, and we're actually going to look at what is going on with the back because it is that ridiculous. In the sound profiles, you've basically got DSPs. They're all preset. So you do have some of that in this as well. And while the settings are pretty basic, they're still somewhat advanced. They're just simplified quite a bit with no manual adjustments there, really. So now we're going to take a look from the back at what you're getting. So now that we're in the back seat, very comfy like, we can't change the radio settings unless we go to the console and get the remote. Yeah, those are trays. So from back here, we can change the settings all the way from the back seat because remember, you're being driven. You're not the driver. So that is what you get with an S560, a remote from the back seat because I can't even touch this when I'm leaned back. I am way back here. And we've got the Burmeister system in the doors, up top, in the back. And there's also a cooler back here too. But that is what you get with the S560 factory audio system. Truly a luxurious factory system for when you're just being driven. I forgot to do a wrap-up video on location, so we're doing it now from my hotel room. So what do we learn from all of this? Factory systems can be very advanced and sound very, very good. The most expensive car is not necessarily the best sounding car. The least expensive car happened to be the most adjustable from all of those. If you like this video, hit subscribe if you're not already. Give us a thumbs up. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, leave those comments below. And we'll see you on the next Tech Stuff Tuesday. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you get notification of the next video as well.